Hi, this is Body Jones, and welcome back to All Things Blogging. Today, we are going to take a look at the ins and outs of starting a blog on your own self-hosted uh, domain. So last week, we talked about starting a free blog and the best way to do that. This week is going to be a little bit more for the people who are ready to move away from that free blog, or uh, if you didn't want to make a free blog in the first place, then you want to to start out on your own domain, then this one is for you. We're also gonna briefly cover how to pick hosting and also how to pick a domain name. So grab your pens, grab your pencils. Let's get ready to start a self-hosted WordPress site. Okay, starting a self-hosted blog. I say it right here on the front page of my site, starting a blog is much easier than you think, and it, it really is true. I think a lot of people have just maybe heard that it's hard, and maybe they just assume that it's really difficult, but honestly, honestly, over the past, just, I don't know, within the past like three or four years, starting a, a website has gotten so easy. There are sites like Wix and Jimdo and a lot of other hosting companies have kind of drag and drop platforms. And then there's WordPress, which has been around for quite a long time. That is by far my platform of choice. And for hosting, there are tons of hosting companies and a lot of them are good. Um, but today we're going to go with SiteGround. It's one that I've recently found. They have very good support and good uptime, good performance, and a really good price. So there are better hosts out there with better support but they cost a lot more and there are also cheaper ones but you don't get the same level of support so i found this is just a good balance uh, between you know what you're paying and what you're getting it's a good bargain okay at this point i'm assuming that you've already decided what you're going to start your blog about your topic um, also assuming that you're going to use wordpress because why wouldn't you <laughs> um, and then at this point, we're going to look at hosting uh, and a domain name at the same time. So uh, if you haven't picked a domain name yet, it's a very important decision. Don't rush it. Um, to start out, you just go to web hosting here at the top, shared hosting, learn more. For this demo, we're going to use the startup plan. Now, the main differences between these three would be you get a little bit better um, support. It says they call it premium support. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that is because I don't have the premium support, but I will say that uh, for the startup, support is really good. You can see that you also get more space with the more expensive plans and more system resources, more memory. If you're just starting out, startup is going to be plenty for you. And if you're not sure now, you can always just move up if you feel like you need to upgrade. I'm just going to here click here, get started. And the domain I'm going to get is this domain. It's I just made a website.com. I'm going to go ahead and click proceed. Okay. Okay. So here I am and I'm going to start filling out this information. They want my email. Password, my state, uh, first name, okay, so I just filled in credit card info and now I'm down to uh, this next section. So I've chosen the startup plan. I think I can change it if I want to, but I'm going to stay with what it is. The data center. Yes, let's see. Yep, I'll stay with one in the US. Okay, so I'll just say that most hosting companies do not offer a monthly kind of month to month hosting. Um, I've maybe seen one or two of the main ones that offer that. Most, mostly you have to do a year, at least a year up front. And typically they'll give you a discount if you do more than a year. Um, this is one of the exceptions. They just have kind of an across the board price of 
five dollars a month, which is good. I mean, um, a lot of the pricing schemes tend to be a little bit complicated, but this is pretty straightforward. So, for this example, I'm just going to do uh, this one month trial period, and this is going to cost a little bit more just because I'm only doing the one month. You can see if I go up to uh, 12 months, it's only about 30 extra dollars. So this is again just for this uh, for the sake of demonstrating. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go with this. All right, awesome. All right, so at this point, I'm going to get an email. The email is going to um, contain my username and password. Okay, so I'm going to go open that right now. Okay, so they just sent me an email that just says. Um, that you know, my username is my email that I used, and my password is the password that I chose as I was logging in or as I was signing up. So I'm going to proceed to the customer area, and I'm actually already logged in. Okay, so here we are logged in, and I'm going to come over here. This is the easiest way to to set up your site. There's a little banner here that says, "Get your site up and running." Set up in two minutes. So I'm going to click that. Start a new website at IJustMadeAWebsite.com. That's what I'm going to do. Proceed. Okay, they're going to have a couple of questions. What type of website is this? I'm just going to say personal blog. Uh, you could pick whatever your option is. Um, do you know which software you're going to, you're going to use? Um, yes, WordPress. All right, and proceed. Okay, so they're just going to want my login information. So um, a username. Um, just remember, these are things you're going to want to keep uh, somewhere, unless you have a really good memory, because um, you want to make a really strong password. That's one of the important things uh, that you need to do when you're setting up a WordPress site, make a very strong password. Okay, so I've I filled in my email, which was already filled in. I've got my username and a password twice. And um, yeah, you want to make sure you get a strong password. So, okay, I'm just going to say for this, remind me later. I don't want to pick a theme right now. All right, so congratulations, you just completed your account set up. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so the next steps here, they give me the URL that I need to go to to log in to my new site, my username, and my password. So all I do is copy this login URL and I'm going to go to a new tab, put it in, and I'm going to sign in with the credentials I just made, the username and password. So, so the username was my um, my name and my password was. All right, and that's it. I'll log in. That's it. So this is the WordPress dashboard, and this is where you'll do pretty much everything with your blog. You'll create posts, create pages, categories, moderate comments, change your theme, anything that there is to do with the actual workings of the blog, this is where you change it. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I will give you a link to another uh, tutorial that shows exactly what you need to do once you're here. Um, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what the blog looks like. So this is one of the default WordPress themes. It's called 2017, and it's very nice looking. You may want to just keep this, or there are also thousands of other free themes that you can choose from. and. I'm going to post another link to an article featuring some of the best responsive themes that are free, and it's pretty helpful for finding a good free theme. So let's go back to the dashboard. And, and one thing to keep in mind is when you are logged into WordPress, you're going to have you're always going to have this little black bar at the top. Uh, ordinarily, visitors won't see this only when you're logged in. This is just so you can get back into the kind of the back end of WordPress. The dashboard. So let's go back to the dashboard. Okay, so at this point we're done. The blog is set up. You have a blog now. But 
we're going to go over a few really important steps that are going to get you off on the right foot. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to settings, go to reading, and then you want to check the box that says discourage search engines from indexing this site. Now, what this is going to do is block Google and other search engines from indexing your site. That might sound like it's not a good idea, but at this point you have no content on the site other than some sample content that's probably duplicated on a lot of other blogs. It's basically your, your blog's not ready for prime time and you, you don't want uh, for the search engines to get a bad first impression. The first impression is very important, so it's best to just keep any search engines from seeing the website before it's ready. So by checking this, it will basically politely say, well, we're not ready yet come back later and they will definitely come back later don't worry so we want to check that and then the next thing we're going to do well the second thing we're going to do is come in to the uh, appearance section and themes now this is where we can see the themes that are already installed these are three themes that are actually made by wordpress so this is 2017 this is 2015 and 2016. These are just, again, the ones that come installed by default. So let's uh, add new. And then this is actually where you can see all of the WordPress themes that are available for free. These are all free. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like choosing a font or choosing a color. There's just so many, um, honestly, to choose from. I'm going to choose one that I know that I like already it's called hero so i'm going to just install that just like that it's installed oh i have to activate it so then we activate it it's now active we can come over here and refresh the page and so we've now got this new theme installed i really like this one it looks good We'll go back to the dashboard again, and this is where we're going to want to start adding some content. With WordPress, you have two different types of page. There are more than that, but these are the these are the big ones. So there's there's the post page type, which is a typical blog post. It's going to have a date, and it's going to be ordered chronologically. And then you have pages, which are much more of a high level uh, type page. You'll have the links typically across the top yeah so uh, links to pages will usually go across here or on some blogs they have a drop down or they, some of them are in different places but it's more accessible from a main navigation where your posts are going to be accessible um, on your blog page so post the first thing i want to do is i'm going to make a new post okay New blog post. All right, so I'm going to just write a little bit of text here. And I will I'll kind of show you how to maybe add an image and also how to add a link. So let's add an image first. And I want to come here to uh, add media. So I'm going to just pick a picture that I have on my computer. And it's very easy to just drag it from your computer. You can just drag it right in, or you can also um, add an image by uh, using this kind of the typical select. Okay, so once you're here, you uh, select it here, then you come over to the right, and you can see some information about the image. And then you want to fill in a couple of these things. Um, at the least, you want to fill in the alt text. So this is a picture of um, something about page speed. So I'm just going to write page speed uh, banner. Okay, I, I, I typically never write captions or descriptions, but I'll usually leave the title alone, but I'll make sure to add an alt text all text is for people that can't see, and it's also for search engines. So it's very important to add something descriptive there. So let's say we want to make a word bold. We can do that. 
um, I can make a link by using this insert link button. Okay, so I'm just going to link to Google. Apply, and there we go. We've got a link. So anything else you want to do? I mean, there's all your typical uh, functions here from something like a word processor. Okay, and when we're ready, we're going to go ahead and just publish this. Okay, and now we can go and we can check out the blog. We'll refresh it. And you can see, oh, there's our new blog post. There it is. Go back home. You can see here that it doesn't really have it, uh, a, the picture that we added, but we can add that. Um, let's go back to where we were editing. There's something here called your featured image. Okay, and we can set this as the featured image. Okay, and then we need to update again. We can refresh, and there, it'll show up nice, nice looking right there. We don't want this post here. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. Um, we'll come to posts again. We can delete this. We don't need to check that, but just trash. All right, okay, so now let's add a page. Um, add new page, okay. We'll just say about. Um, you can maybe say where you went to school. You can say whatever you want to say. You could put a picture of yourself here. You could link to your school. You could link to your friend's sites or you could link to your other sites or whatever it is you want to do. Um, but that's how you make a page. Let's go ahead and publish this and you can see that it made uh, a link. I mean, uh, it made a URL just about. So I'm gonna publish. Okay, so let's see. If, oh, yeah, there it is. So it automatically added um, a link. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, you can see how that was pretty straightforward. It wasn't very hard to do. I think um, your biggest decisions at this, your biggest decisions are going to be what domain you want to get, what do you want to blog about. Keep in mind that we still have the site blocked uh, to search engines. And there are going to be some more things that you want to do before uh, you unblock. And I'm just going to refer you to howtostartablog.org. Um, it's a WordPress SEO checklist. And it's not just SEO, but it's kind of a best practice. Um, you can see the first step was to block search engines. Um, you could just go through these steps in, in order. Um, you don't have to do them all, but I, I feel like they're important. This is adding social media accounts. If you have them, set up Google Analytics. Set up Google Analytics. Again, you can read more about these here. Um, but yeah, just come and check out this guide. It's free and it has some really good information. There's also a, a video that explains more about each step here. And I'll add a link to this in the description. So check that out. And I think that's going to just about cover it. Um, really appreciate you watching and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and uh, hit the like button. That would help out a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.